more. Okay, um, so this tool I actually got from Four Seasons Tools, mm -hmm. which you can find on the internet. I think their website is like small tool something, I can't remember, I can tell you in a little bit. But basically it does 12 soil blocks at a time. There's a little divot in there that, so that when you make your block, there's a little tiny hole in the top of each one where you drop your seed. And um, you can actually get different sizes of these. You can get ones that are deeper for if you want to do squash seeds and that sort of thing. Or you can just kind of push them down in there. And this one is really nice because it stands up so you can stand up and do this um, upright. So, again, well, actually, I'm going to rinse it real quick. It's not to get this step, but that actually makes it slide a little bit easier with the. With the mm. Sandcastles. I know, <laughs> And then, I get a tray ready. And it's good if you don't have any fallout. It's not the end of the world if a couple fall out. Oh, so and then, they should stick in there when you pull yeah. them. Okay. And then just kind of push down while you pull up, if that makes sense. And you have 12 trays. And, you know, some of them do this, and I just kind of put that back and, and put a little hole in the middle again and call it good. And as you go, each tray of them gets a little bit more professional looking <laughs> and a little bit better. And um, so then, do you break them up eventually then to to like give them more space, or just nope. go ahead and plant them? No. Nope. Like so them yep. Yeah. So I'll do three batches of the um, of this, just side by side. So the next ones I'll put in, and I actually kind of push them close, and then the next ones, and then you're going to have just enough room to do a row of singles down the side and a row of singles on the end, and that will be fifty. And so then I do use that little single one for that. Or you could make a block of 12, just set them out on the floor and just pull them, just gradually place them alongside. So let's keep going and we'll get, I'll let you guys. And you do all it. those trays every year? I do, um, yeah. I do. So I don't know. I'm trying to think how many I do. So I do 500 to 600 tomatoes and then several hundred peppers. I, do, I only. I only soil block the things that I'm going to do as transplants. You know, a lot of stuff I use direct seed to the garden. So my tomatoes, peppers, um, eggplant, cabbage crops, and onions and leeks, celery. I soil block everything else. I pretty much direct seed out. So quite a few. So wow. I just do, you know, like 10 to 20 at a time. Go in. Good nice. yeah. That's a good one. And if somebody else wants to. Um, Play around with doing the ones for the side. You sure can. A separate pile of dirt over here, Chaz. All right. Oh, okay. there. there you go. And, and should I get it wet? Or no? Yeah, or it, it helps a little bit, yeah. just so it doesn't stick. So it slides a little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Did I push so, too hard? You maybe? know what? They'll go ahead and put those. You still have like nine in there or whatever. Go ahead and this put way. them in. Mm -hmm. Yep, I just go that way. And you can kind of push up. There you go. And then we'll just hand fill in those other oh, ones. No, so it's, <laughs> it's all right. So whichever ones. And they, you know, sometimes even if they're a short block, I'll still use them. I might take out like this little guy and then just fill those in with new. Cool. Size but it's your your first trade your hardest. They're so pretty then, looking. <laughs> it is. They are. And then it kind of then so it kind of simplifies. And so these are now. Michelle. Are these? The, they're not the small ones, right? I mean, you had these. Remember? These are the I guess two inch they call them. And then you do other ones too. I sometimes do those little micros. Oh, um, sometimes for yeah, like celery and stuff. I might use those. Anyway. The idea behind the micros is that sometimes this this. My experience is that the smaller the seed, sometimes the harder, the less the germination rate. It's like the harder, the longer it takes to germinate them. So if you just have those little tiny micros, 
and only 50% yeah. of them germinate. It's not as much soil that you're throwing back into your compost or whatever. You've just got these little teeny tiny blocks and then you can block them up into a bigger one like this if you want to. Excellent job. Mm -hmm. So then, yeah, and I kind of grabbed the tree with my feet somehow, but... Excellent job. Got Very good. Job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How's the little one coming out? So then once we get a tray finished, I just set them um, wherever I think it's going to be out of the way and just start lining them up over here. And um, if I don't if I don't have time today to start feeding into them, I'll just take some, a sheet of plastic and just cover And I don't stack them because then your blocks are getting, uh, getting squashed down. So just single um, rows of them and then just cover it with some kind of, you know, old plastic bags or whatever you got, and it will keep the moisture in there for, oh, a week or two. Oh, wow. If they're covered up pretty good. And so then on a different day, I can go and sit down and and um, put the seeds in, label them, and then spray it down with a squirt bottle if it's dried out just a bit, put a lid on it, and put it under the grow lights. Oh, you put like a plastic Yeah, like cover? these clear dome covers. Or just surround them. Okay. That works great too. You just need to make sure that as that soon as the they moisture. start coming, they're mostly germinated and then take that surround wrap up right. so they don't start bending over. Yep, and that, then you just have your own little microclimate in there. So okay. um, I don't actually water the trays with much water until they've all germinated or as many as I think are going to germinate. <laughs> and then <laughs> there's always one in the corner, isn't there? Uh -huh. And then um, so the, when I put the seeds in, um, so put a seed in each little divot and then I take uh, perlite and just sprinkle it over the top and that basically you could just use soil also and that just makes the contact between the seed and the soil um, basically just the weight of that perlite or the, or the dirt on the top, just a thin layer of it and then, um, and then just take a spray gun, uh, just a spray bottle of water, spray it down and then cover it up with either the plastic dome or a piece of saran wrap and then just let it sit for um, a few days to a week or however long it takes for them to germinate. Under the, lights, then. under the lights. Under the lights. Mm -hmm. Do you spray it with water every day also? Or mm -hmm. after no, you usually spray? after that initial spray, until they start germinating, they don't, because they kind, it kind of self-waters under mm -hmm. the plastic then. So you really don't need to, you don't want to overwater your seed because then they will rot. So that's kind of, self-control that I always have to have is remember that <laughs> the first couple trays especially is okay now I only spray these right I don't soak them. but then once they've germinated and the trays um, or the blocks have started drying a bit then I just take um, you can see this here Rick, but I just kind of pull the, tra whoops, pull the tray aside a little bit with a pitcher of water or whatever you've got a watering can and just pour water down in here until you can see it going all the way around and filling up the tray essentially a halfway or so and then you wait for a little bit and those blocks will just soak that water up and um, then once they're germinated you can kind of keep the tray with a little water in it pretty much all the time and, the tr and those blocks will only absorb as much water as they have the capacity to absorb it. So. So you so you make the blocks and then you seed and then cover with a little bit of soil? Inside? Yeah, and what I do, oh, I use the perlite just because it's really easy to see the little um, sprouts coming up through that white. Oh, okay. I can see those little green okay. tips coming up, which okay. makes me extremely excited. And so then <laughs> I know that, you know, you can look at it real quick and go, oh yeah, there's, you know, half of them have germinated. I need to leave it a little bit longer and just leave it alone. And then when you think, okay, it's, this is probably all that's going to germinate. It's been so many days or whatever. Then you can you can take that lid off, check the how dry the blocks are. Maybe add some, pour some water into the side. Oh, you just pour some water into the side. Yep, I just pour it into the side. And, and there's absorb. always usually one little corner like this. Okay. Just how the blocks line up that's easier to water. Okay. And so I just make that really accessible for pouring and just gently okay. water in. So if you're putting them, um, once you put them out into your greenhouse, uh -huh. if you have like a sprayer, okay. a mist fine sprayer, that would be okay. Okay. But otherwise, make sure 
whoever's watering your trays does it gently. So, because if you really pour water in there, then these blocks on the corners will kind of break down. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. they really, they really get strong fast. Um, as soon as you get some root growth in there, they really, they, they stay together very well. Okay. It amazes me. Um, with your typical uh, plastic cell trays that you might usually seed into, um, when your plants get a little bit bigger and the roots get to the outside of the soil, then they'll start circling around inside that plastic cell. And then when you want to transplant out, you pull it out of there and you kind of have to usually straighten those roots out a bit to transplant. With the soil blocks, it's even though it's a very minute little airspace in between each block, when the roots get out to the edge of the soil and they feel that oxygen, that airspace, they stop growing out. So they don't just grow out into the next block and they don't circle around. They just kind of quit growing right there and then they start growing some new roots and they put more growth into the stem and the plant itself instead of the root just going and going and going. So it's, it's a very beneficial thing for the roots to, to go be in soil blocks. And there's also just a greater mass of soil in a little two by two square block than there is in a um, typical uh, kind of pyramid type of shape like this. It doesn't seem like a lot of difference, but it really is quite a bit of difference in nutrients. So once they germinate, you move them out to the greenhouse? Yeah, need... so, the, so in the house, once they've all gotten um, germinated well and just a little bit of strength going maybe their true leaves you know how they have their first leaves and then they get their true leaves that look like the real plant the real tomato leaves or the real pepper or whatever then I start moving them up into the starter greenhouse to get the better sun up there and that really um, beefs them out this way so they're not just growing straight up like sometimes they do under a bright light. They'll just really shoot up and not get real strong. Right. Right. I miss the whole grow. Yeah, and they need that they need that more full spectrum that sunshine has than what a grow light does. Even if you have the full spectrum grow lights, they still are lacking a little bit compared to just yeah. And do you